Good afternoon, welcome to our small footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you are new here, we are a family of eight who live off grid in Australia. Doing a run of videos daily as much as I can uh, to do with how I prep food when I only shop every six to eight weeks. I get lots of questions about it all the time, so what I try and do is each time I go shopping, I spend the next 10 days or so trying to do daily videos to show you what I'm doing with the food that I bought, so how I manage to preserve it, freeze it, use it to make sure that it lasts us the six to eight weeks. Uh, the last couple of months I didn't manage to do it so I'm putting extra effort into doing it this one and we've got lots of prep to go. Summer is really great for getting cheap fruit at the fruit and veg store too so we're working through all of that. So things go in sequence to a degree of what needs to be used and when and things like that. Uh, so we use the higher priority stuff first uh, and the lower priority later sort of thing. Uh, if that makes sense. I'm rambling a little bit, it's late afternoon here uh, and it's been a busy day. So uh, today's video is lots of baking. So we're using up some veggies and stuff that need to be used uh, in baked goods and then the baked goods can be frozen or eaten over the next few days. Things, baked goods will last in the fridge for, you know, three, five days, depending on what they are, or they get frozen whole and then they get pulled out and sliced up for eating at a different time. So we use them whichever way. It depends on what it is really, uh, or share it with people if we have people to share it with. So come along and see what I got done today. A whole bunch of different uh, loaves and cakes and things like that. Um, I mixed up my lemon syrups that I made yesterday so you can come and have a look at how they look today and things like that. So the first thing I got done was straining the cordial. So this is the cordial that's been steeping all night. I made it yesterday. I brought it up and dissolved the sugar and then let it sit. So you want to let it steep overnight whenever you can before you uh, strain out the solids because that's going to give you more flavor. Now you can can this if you've got the right citric acid, tartaric acid in it and the acidity is right. I didn't worry about any of that because we're intending to just put this straight in the fridge. It was only a fairly small batch. It was a bit of a test run to see how we like it uh, and uh, spoiler we do very much like it it's a very mild sort of a lemony gingery drink we're very much enjoying it and Daryl says it actually reminds him of LNP which is his favorite New Zealand uh, lemon soda that, they, that he drinks there so uh, that's great we, we will just drink it I'll probably make another batch out of some more of the lemons that I've got left because I haven't quite finished to them yet and then I'll can that batch I kept the rind and all the ginger chunks that were in the cordial as I strained it and put them out on a tray so I can flash freeze them. And then once they're frozen solid, what I'll do is I'll powder them up a little bit and then I'll use them as spices or additives for other things. Uh, Cause they're candied, they'll be very sweet too. So it'll lose, uh, so it'll, yeah, it's like candied lemon peel, candied ginger. So there'll be plenty of things I can use it for. So it'd be easy just to freeze it, grind it, stick it in the freezer, and then I've got it there to use in other things. The next thing I did was zucchini slice. So zucchini slice is a favorite for the kids. Uh, I generally make it a lot over the summer, except that I haven't had a garden. So I haven't had a glut of zucchinis like I normally would. So these really cheap zucchinis were wonderful for that, though I am going to have to grate some and just freeze them grated, I think, because we're not going to get through them all before they start going bad. So my zucchini slice, I think I've made it on here before. I do it by ratios and it's fairly simple. So what I do is I do 600 grams of grated whatever. So whether that's zucchini, carrot, corn, onion, mushrooms, garlic, whatever you want, sweet potato, all of that works. I do 600 grams of that grated mix. Today we used ham from our Christmas ham. So when we had finished eating the Christmas ham, we chopped any little chunks that were left off, stuck it in the freezer. I pulled some out and grated it in the Thermomix as well and used that with it all. So I used the Thermomix cutter to grate the zucchini and the carrot, which is, this is like totally cutting down on my time required to do this, which is wonderful. And it's a lot easier on my hands. So I grated the zucchini and the carrot like that. I minced the onion in the bowl because the kids don't like chunks of onion. So I minced it nice and fine in the bowl. Uh, and I minced or grated the ham as well so it ends up being like this shredded ham that spreads all the way through the 
rest of the zucchini slice so I shredded that in the bowl as well and mixed it all together so for 600 grams of that grated mix I add six eggs 225 grams of flour and then a heaped teaspoon of baking soda and baking powder or bicarb soda and baking powder which however you want to call it that's all you need you can add some salt some garlic powder onion powder all that sort of thing if you want uh, we like to put some flake salt on it when we're eating it and sometimes some mayo so I don't add anything else into it I just do it like that and it works well for us each of these cast iron trays actually holds a double batch of that so I made three double batches of this mix and baked it off in the three different trays it freezes really well when you pull it out to defrost it just it tastes like it was never frozen which is fantastic uh, but it lasts for, in the fridge for a few days too and the kids will eat it cold straight out of the fridge for breakfast which is wonderful so yeah and we made three big trays full of it after that i made a carrot banana and wall cake walnut cake wall cake walnut cake now our carrots we're having an issue with the carrots we bought 20 kilos of carrots not all of them fit in the fridge but also uh, i mentioned that the fridge wasn't cooling properly which meant that the carrots got overheated to begin with humidity and all the rest of it they end up oxidizing and they get black spots all over the outsides of them this is not detrimental to the carrot it, it is if you leave it long enough like if you left it longer than they go soggy and it's gross but initially just those black spots on it are just oxidization of the skin and you can just peel them off so what we did was we peeled off a bunch of them today to use uh, we'll have to do some more over the next few days and we'll either grate them and freeze them or use them in canned soups or I don't know we'll find uses for them so we grated a bunch of the carrots and I used some for this I the bananas are going spotty really quickly too part of that is because of the weather as well uh, but things also got wet in the hailstorm so that didn't help at all uh, the cake was I did a quick google on what I could find something that had carrot and banana in it <laughs> and then adapted whatever I found to suit with the ingredients that I have so I used olive oil and stuff in it not any butters and things like that uh, I'm pretty sure I wrote down what I did so I can always share that but it was uh, the it was yeah shredded carrot mashed banana uh, walnuts any basic cake ingredients and it smelled really and cinnamon and stuff it smelled really good so we're starting to rotate things in and out of the oven so while I pulled some zucchini slice out of the oven to put the cake in and things like that and we had some of that zucchini slice for lunch and as I said we had it with mayo and a bit of flaked salt for lunch and we didn't have anything with it that was lunch which is fine there's plenty in that to be eaten for lunch so that was our lunch for today after that I started on the banana bread so again trying to use up the bananas we do freeze a lot of them but at the same time uh, we like to bake with it as well though you can bake banana bed with frozen bananas you can just pull them straight out of the freezer stick them in the thermix puree them up and you've got banana for banana bread and I do do that on occasion but while we've got them fresh want to use them as well so I did some banana bread the kids really love banana bread it's a really basic recipe I'm pretty sure I've got a reel for it I don't know if there's a short for it as well but um, it's a standard recipe I like to mix my egg sugar oil and bananas in the thermix first blend that up into a bit of a paste and then I add the flour mix it through and then I just fold and it's got baking powder baking soda of course and then cinnamon I really like cinnamon in my banana bread and then I fold the chocolate chips through you don't have to have chocolate chips you could add walnuts or coconut or anything you want the kids really like chocolate chips and you know we have them so may as well use them and keep them happy so you fold the chocolate chips in to the batter and then it's done it's a really simple batter and it's very tasty it always works for me uh, I use the jumbo bread tins because I, I have them and they're a good shape uh, so I use these for a lot of things because of the coating on them and stuff they don't seem to go yuck like a lot of other baking tins do in our weather they seem to hold their patina or patina whatever you want to call it I don't know how that word is pronounced but that and not discolor so I did use liners in them I used the loaf liners that I get from Kmart they're reusable loaf liners they're not made for a tin this large and sometimes you do get some seepage but uh, it doesn't need to be a perfect shape so it's neither here nor there uh, I just try and avoid using baking paper if I can I use a lot of it still but there's I do try and not use it if I have a solid option not to use it so we use those liners 
and made two loaves with that. Again, the bananas were ripening fast and they got wet in that hailstorm. So just trying to use them up. And banana bread, again, freezes really well. You can slice it and freeze it. I normally slice it and then freeze like in half sets and then pull them out of the fridge, the freezer the night before to into the fridge and they can eat them the next day as snacks. So that got done and put into the oven. The next thing I did was put some lemon curd on in the Thermomix. Now, one of the things that I rave about with the Thermomix that I really enjoy is the fact that you can do one button things like custards and this lemon curd. So basically you throw everything into the pot, turn it on, and after 12 minutes, 13 minutes, depending on the quantities that you're doing, you have lemon curd. You haven't had to sit there and whisk it. You haven't got any lumps. You haven't accidentally scrambled your eggs, etc., etc. You just have perfect lemon curd. And because I make it with coconut oil, not butter, it makes it even easier for me. So I just throw everything into the Thermomix and then turn it on and I have lemon curd. And I really, really love it. <laughs> I think it's one of the highlights of having a Thermomix is things like that and the ability to do that. So uh, we use coconut oil, as I said, instead of butter. It means that the lemon curd is a little paler in color uh, and very bright flavored, very lemony flavored. I really like it that way. Some people don't, but that's, you know, we don't use butter, so that's what you get. I have made it with ghee before, but ghee is just such an expensive thing to use. Coconut oil is much cheaper, and whilst it's lovely with the ghee, it's just, it's a little unnecessary. The coconut oil works fine. I pulled the carrot banana walnut cake out of the oven and let it cool. It cooked up wonderfully. I will definitely make it again, although the kids weren't overly keen on it. Uh, nuts in cakes aren't their favorite thing. Even nuts in brownies haven't gone down real well, but they love nuts. Uh, and we make a lot of things with nut butters, but the actual chunks of nuts, they're not overly keen on. Mind you, they will. there's a jar of walnuts that they eat like by the handful. So, you know, it's just kids, isn't it? <laughs> Can't do the same thing twice. That 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 wouldn't be feasible. You have to keep us on our toes. But anyway, I sl I pulled it out and I have tasted it from since this point here, and it was really nice. It's lovely and moist. It's got that carrot flavour, but the chunks of walnut and the bananas made it really lovely and sweet. I really enjoyed it. Once the curd was cooked, I filled a jar for a neighbour who is graciously grabbing me some pig fat today when she heads to Toowoomba. Thank you, Angie. Uh, they, I called the butcher there and there was a butcher there that was selling some that she could pick up for me and it was cheaper than what I missed out on in Brisbane as well. So that's just a boon there. So she's grabbing that pig fat for me and that means I'll have a video in the next couple of days where I render down 20 kilos of pig fat into lard. <laughs> but uh, I'm very grateful for that. For Angie for doing that for me so I asked her if she liked lemon things she said she liked lemon curd so I poured a whole jar full of lemon curd for her to take home and then I used the rest to make lemon curd tea cake now this is a favorite cake of mine uh, it's on the recipe community as Edna's lemon turd tea cake I think lemon turd <laughs> lemon curd tea cake I think uh, and I make a few adjustments to it but I I'm sure it's perfect as is too because people rave about it now I make double the cake batter. I can't help but change things, can I? I make double the cake batter. I use coconut oil instead of butter. And then I use the double the amount of curd and I use coconut oil in my curd too. So I layer the cake tin with half the cake batter and then you pour the curd over the top of it and then you crumble the cake batter, the rest of the cake batter over the top of the cake. So it crumbles over the top. It's like a crumble cake. Uh, and then you bake it. It's a favorite cake of mine. I really enjoy it and it's great straight out of the fridge too which sometimes cakes aren't so great if you have to refrigerate them and in our weather you kind of have to refrigerate things but it's really nice straight out of the fridge too so I think the really tart curd helps that to with this cake uh, to keep it that bright lemony flavor without being overly sweet so it works really well. Uh, the Banana bread comes out of the oven at the barbecue. Of course, I'm doing all of this cooking on a barbecue. So it's just a hooded barbecue. I've got two uh, upside down steel stainless steel colanders is my racks for putting my cakes and stuff on. So I'm rotating in and out on those two little upside down cake tin, uh, colanders. So the banana bread comes out of the barbecue and then the lemon cake went into the barbecue to be cooked. Uh, so the banana bread I tried, I did pull out of the tins a little early and one collapsed on me, but the kids aren't going to care that one's a little, little weirdly shaped. <laughs> uh, 
After that, I put some yeasted flatbread on for dinner because I hadn't planned dinner yet. And by this point in time, I'm so over food. <laughs> so I put some yeasted flatbread on for dinner. It's my basic flatbread recipe. I use, uh, I vary it if I'm using sourdough or if it's using yeast, then it's slightly different. Uh, it's about 1200 grams of flour with about uh, uh, it's 60 grams of oil, uh, two tablespoons of yeast, uh, 740 odd grams of water, and some salt. That's basically it. It's a very basic recipe, and if I'm using uh, sourdough, then I bump the quantities of flour and water accordingly to the amount of sourdough starter that I'm putting in there. Uh, but it only takes about half an hour to rise when it's yeasted, so it, may, it works wonderfully if you want something really quick. Uh, while the dough was in kneading so I've used my KitchenAid to knead the dough uh, because I can and while that was kneading I did the I rotated the lemon syrup jars so you're supposed to tip the jars up upside down and back the right way so that the uh, sugars can move around in the jars uh, I reckon I need to adjust these jars a little bit and potentially put a little bit more juice or a little bit more lemons in there because some of the sugar isn't dissolving and I think my scales might have been sitting on a lemon seed when I measured out the sugar to lemon ratio because it seemed like a lot of sugar at the time uh, but I was just trusting the process but it still seems like it's a bit too much sugar like there isn't quite enough lemon juice for the sugar to all dissolve so I think what I'm going to do is just fiddle with the jars a little bit move things around a little bit add some more lemons or some or just some lemon juice if needed to try and get those ratios better and get all that sugar to dissolve before they get moved into the fridge otherwise we're going to have crystallization so you want all that sugar to be well and truly dissolved before you're moving it into the fridge or it's just going to crystallize up again which is fine when you've got lemon sugar it's not like it's a bad thing but it's not quite what we're going for uh so I also pulled the lemon curd cake out of the oven and put that aside. Um, I don't think I've got any footage of cutting that and I don't think I took any today either. So I might have to get a photo of that. There's not a whole lot left. I gave some to Angie and I've eaten a bit myself, but I will try and get a photo of the inside of that because the layering of it is lovely. Uh, I oiled and covered the dough and put it aside to rise. So that, and then I actually, while it was rising, came out and did the voiceover for yesterday's video. So that's what I was doing then. Uh, once the dough was ready to go I was trying to figure out what we we're gonna have with it so I used the Thermomix cutter to shred some cabbage this is the first time I've used the cutter for cabbage uh, I was a little hesitant because I don't like cabbage cut in the Thermomix it ends up diced and it's just not my thing but the cabbage the coleslaw recipe on cookie do for the Thermomix has instructions for cutting the cabbage and it has it on the slicing side not the grating side which I suppose makes sense and just cutting it into wedges and feeding it through so I decided to just give it a go it worked wonderfully uh, lots of little tiny shreds of cabbage which is how I like it I like the little shreds I like it to be finely shredded I really like cabbage but I do like it to be finely shredded so I shredded half a cabbage and then uh, shredded a couple of carrots as well and turned that into basically a coleslaw to have with dinner so I just made a bunch a batch of really mustardy uh, cowboy candy filled uh, duck egg mayo and then I mixed that through the cabbage and the carrots to make sort of a coleslaw type sort of a dressing and then uh, we had that with dinner so I rolled out the dough into about 60 gram balls of dough so I tend to weigh my dough just to make sure that everything's fairly even uh, then that way when they're all funny shapes we can say to the kids it doesn't matter what they look like they all weighed the same to start with <laughs> but also just for portion control so I do about 60 gram bowl balls of dough and I roll them out weigh them roll them into little balls and then I roll them flat we don't worry about the shape of them in this for flatbreads like if we're making tortillas and stuff we tend to try and make them nice and round and, and you know that sort of thing but when we just making flatbreads it really doesn't matter uh, so we served them with the last of yesterday's marinated chicken thighs and plenty of the coleslaw mix so you sort of can't beat that for a summer meal when it's hot I find a lot of the time that I really struggle of a summer evening to to find food especially when I'm prepping food all day so like even though I'm prepping food all day it's not necessarily food that we're going to eat that day and it makes it really difficult because I still then have to cook food for dinner and quite often I get to a point where I just go I really I don't know so uh flatbreads are a good fallback especially yeasted ones uh we 
I try and do sourdough ones, but at the moment we've got a lack of fridge space. So to do them preemptively sourdough the night before to have the next day, it takes a bit of planning when you don't have fridge space and everything else. So yeasted ones works really well. So warm flatbreads, warm chicken, cold salads, mayo. It's just a wonderful sort of a easy dinner meal. uh, And there's everything you want in it. You know, you've got your proteins, your carbs, your veggies and whatever else. Uh, it's not the healthiest meal, but it is pretty damn tasty. So that's the main thing. And everyone really enjoys it, which makes it better because when you've been doing food all day for you to go to the effort of making something and everyone to turn their nose up at it, it's kind of hard. So it's really nice to serve something that you know that everyone will really enjoy. So that was it for today. Thank you for joining me again and I shall see you again tomorrow. Thanks guys.